South Africa's new finance minister, Tito Mbaweni, will deliver his maiden budget speech. The medium-term budget, not like the February budget, which outlines exact allocations to various priorities, but it does set out government spending priorities for a number of years. And of course, we know that there are various issues like debt. South Africa is also one of the highest unemployment rates in the world, which is hard to tackle when the economy is barely growing. Officials are also trying to deal with massive inequality, partly a legacy of apartheid. We're bringing you a series of interviews in the run-up to the budget. Tonight we'll be asking how it can help transformation. To discuss, we're joined by Dr. Peter Jacobs from the Human Sciences Research Council. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us. So what does a transformative budget look like? Well, it depends on what we mean by a transformative budget. Transformation, of course, can take on the one meaning where it's just uh, trying to say, well, we, we have to transfer more money to people who can make the economy run better. Alternatively, the transformation budget could mean how do you actually restructure the uh, South African economy away from what you've already mentioned as a highly un uh, you know, unequal society, society with, with extreme levels of unemployment. So it depends on what you mean really by a transformative budget. Now, if you look at uh, the history of uh, budgeting over the last uh, 25 years almost, the history of budgeting has focused on a variety of different uh, elements and uh, to address uh, one of the big puzzles in South Africa, which is the puzzle between uh, lower levels of money metric poverty and higher levels of extreme inequality, which would, I would prefer to call it structural inequality. A transformative budget to address structural inequality is unfortunately uh, far away from uh, the trends and patterns of the past. What we've seen, rather, is basically a budget to address monumetric poverty. And this has been what we've seen in the increase in social grant spending and a whole host of other forms of what is often referred to by the government and the Minister of Finance as the social wage increase. And these would be expenditure in the delivery of houses, to uh, disadvantaged uh, households in South Africa and also uh, the delivery of uh, improved health care or education. But structural transformation actually deals with, I think, what we have as a big debate in the country at the moment uh, on, on issues around land expropriation without compensation and those kinds of issues that's focusing on the control and ownership of uh, economic wealth and uh, can the budget change that relationship? Uh, that is a, a very, very big and complicated question. So, so is it in the right domain where it's being debated uh, at, at a national level? It's, it's not being dealt with by Treasury in the budget, that, that uh, debate on land ownership. Is, is Treasury kind of doing its job, staying in its lane, and that's okay? Well, National, national I, I can't hear the question. Well, National Treasury has, has got to balance two main elements within every budget. The one element of the budget, of course, is expenditure. The other element of the budget is income. Now, if you look at simple money metric uh, poverty as an indicator of so-called transformation, then the Treasury year is having a very uh, difficult task. Why? Because if you look at what is happening with regard to just uh, uh, one of the key developments coming from the, pre the budget of February 2018, the increase in, in VAT, uh, that is obviously not a transformative uh, move or from a tax uh, perspective, although it's uh, raised for the state in the order of about 36 or well, 56 billion uh, rands uh, expected uh, from uh, the VAT, 1% uh, point increase from 14% to 15%, it is not transformative because the regressive aspect of VAT, which means that VAT falls heavier on poor households than on those who are wealthier, uh, they have uh, disappointingly only six months later produced a report on so-called zero rating. One would have expected a transformative budget from that particular point of view to have intervened much earlier and when the plan became available 
fact, almost two or three years ago, in 2015 already, when this debate and talk of increase in VAT started, that they should have investigated uh, issues around zero rating, how to improve and expand zero rating uh, as, as, a as a measure to counter the, the blow on the poorer households, but that wasn't done. The report only came in six months later, and we have to wait a, a, a while longer before any of that will be implemented. So even from a money metric point of view on the income side, the government has not uh, and National Treasury has not made a move that is really in the interest of improving, uh, you know, people's uh, living standards, from a, uh, as, as it were. Uh, there are also other elements, uh, if, if we can say that the government is moving in line with uh, its priorities identified in the National Development Plan. For example, one of the key uh, areas of the National Development Plan is about spatial inequality, and. Uh, an element or an indication of spatial inequality has been the uh, f removal of the distance between where people live and where they find work. Now this uh, transportation tax on people is being uh, double whammy if we look at what has happened recently to uh, petrol price increases for example. So poorer households have extreme difficulty in addressing those kinds of uh, additional expenditure. Now if you have increases in petrol prices and the cost of living from that point of view, then these uh, make it very, very hard for people to uh, make ends meet, to live above the, the poverty line. Uh, actually, the latest uh, report that came out from uh, Stats A suggests that poverty, uh, at least in the post-2015 period, seems to have been increasing, uh, and along the same line, of course, increases in levels of, uh, of inequality. So this uh, situation uh, leaves Treasury in a very, very uh, difficult situation, and how they're going to get out of this predicament uh, is, is very hard uh, to, to say, but certainly uh, the um, uh, transformation in the budget uh, requires uh, far, far more uh, uh, stringent uh, efforts on the part of both uh, National Treasury and, and government. Doctor, we're running out of time, so very, very quickly, would that mean sort of subsidies for low-cost housing uh, in, in built-up urban areas? What's a practical solution, very quickly? Th that would indeed, you know, go some way, but it's uh, in inadequate especially if it's done without uh, strong involvement of civil society groups and civil society organizations. And that is the, the biggest complication, I think, that is facing the state. It is to find the voices of civil, civil society reflected in the budget. And that would be the first step towards a, transform, a, transform, a transformative budget, a budget that reflects the voices of the population, that will reflect uh, closer the aspirations of people who cannot afford to make ends meet under very harsh and difficult economic circumstances. However, the room for maneuver is very limited given the economic downturn, uh, not only in South Africa, but in other parts of the world as well. And so it is it, what is expected going forward actually is not an easy transformative budget, but actually increasing number of expenditure cuts on the part of the state. All right, uh, we have to leave it there. I wish we could continue uh, discussing a transformative budget that was Dr. Peter Jacobs from the Human Sciences Research Council.